Hello, I'm Linda from paperboutique.blogspot.com. Several months ago, I did a video on how to add sentiments to Cricut images using Word. Since then, I've received numerous emails asking me to do a similar video on how to use Photoshop to add sentiments to Cricut cuts. Well, here's the card I made for the video on how to use Microsoft Word. I thought it would be fun to use the same card for this video, and you can tell I did this one at Easter time. Well, first of all, I try to match the shape as closely as possible using a shape from Photoshop. For example, we're going to be using the oval shape today because I'm going to be doing a happy birthday instead of a happy Easter. But if it's an unusual shape like this particular cut, what I do is I'll go ahead and try to come as close as possible. In this case, I might use a rectangle to keep it as close as possible to the cut. But today, like I said, we're going to do an oval and I'll go to the computer in just a moment. And today's size, I'm going to cut the oval at 1.5 by 3 inches. Well, let's go ahead now and step over to the computer and I'll show you how to open and work on Photoshop. Well, let's go ahead and get started using Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop version CS4, but you could use different versions of Photoshop as well as Adobe Elements for this technique. Let's go ahead and I'll just open a new document, File, New. Let's do that again. I had something open earlier. Let's do File, New. There we go. And you'll get a screen like this and you can type in a name. I'm just going to leave it untitled for now. The preset, I leave it custom. And what I like to do for width and height, I like to make my image size when I'm working with this one inch larger than the size I'm trying to replicate. Remember our oval will measure 1.5 by 3 inches. So what I'm going to type in here will be 4 inches by 2.5 and you can just go ahead and this knows I was practicing a little earlier so the size came up again. Just type in 2.5 and then over here you can click on inches or centimeters or pixels and if I use the inches. Resolution, I like to use 300 because it's the recommended resolution for print. Color mode, you have a number of choices, but I like to work in the RGB color mode for this. And I also like to work at 8-bit. You can change the background content color. I like to work in white just because it's easier for me to see. And at this point, you'll go ahead and click OK, and then this will be the size. Since we're making an oval today, I'm going to go ahead and use this particular tool, the second tool. If you right click on it, you can see you can have a rectangular tool, an elliptical tool. You could use the rectangular one if you wanted to make a rectangle or a square. The elliptical, you could use it for an oval or for a, a circle. And in this case, you're just going to click on this screen and there it is. There is the size of the oval. Now, you'll want to go ahead and, and do the size. And up here under style, it's important that you click on fix size so you can modify the width and the height. And if you remember, our oval, you can see up here, was 3 inches by 1.5. And since that's okay, there's your oval. What I also like to do now is to make a border around this. And um, I'll show you after we're done on the computer that when you print it out, that just helps for placement. So to make a border, and there's so many different ways to do everything in Photoshop, and this is just how I do it. I go to Edit, and then I'll go to Stroke, and then I'm going to have my border that's three pixels wide, and you can go ahead and modify that whatever width or color. I'm just going to do mine at on black, and then I want mine on the outside, so I'll click Outside, and then just go ahead and click OK. And then in order to get it to stop, I call it the marching ants, to get it to stop, I go up to select on the top and I just click on deselect. And there it is. Next, we're going to go ahead and add the text. And to do that, you're going to go over to the text tool, click on it, 
and then I'm just going to come in and type happy and then I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to do birthday. Now you can see that this is a, as a group. If I click up here to move it, it will move as a group. But I don't really want that. I want birthday on a different layer so I can move it closer and I don't have to worry about the spacing and I can change it up a little. So I'll go over to here and just click on the T for text and then I'm going to delete backspace birthday out of there. And then I'll just go up here and select. And so now we have happy and I can kind of move it wherever I, you know, get happy with it. <laughs> just joking. And then what I'm going to do now is add another layer and I'll go over and click on the text tool and I'll come down and I'll type, whoops, it helps if you can spell birthday. And as you can see, I'll click up here again to select it and now I can move this independently. So you'll want to play around with it, get it centered. I may want to do happy and, and move it around until I'm satisfied with the placement. And if you want to look over here on your layers, you can see that happy and birthday on separate layers. And that's how I like to, one of the fun things about using Photoshop is to create the text in different layers. And so you can do all sorts of independent manipulations. Well, what we're going to do now is, and, and I'll show you this in just a moment, I would go ahead at this point and select print and it will come out and print with this particular border around it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the piece of um, the Cricut Cut over the top of this and then you don't, I'll want to print it again, but you don't want to print this border because if you print out the border again it might show on your Cricut Cut. So all you'll do is you'll go over here to background and click on it and so now you'd run it through the machine, the printer again, without the, the sh not the shadow, but without the outline on. And this will make more sense as soon as we're finished here, I'll, I'll show you how I printed it out on the printer. Well, let's leave now and go ahead and go to the printer. Well, now that we've finished on the computer, I want to go over a few of the things that we talked about. One of the things I mentioned is when we, I'll bring this in, when we actually created the happy birthday circle on the, or oval on the computer. And then what I do is I insert a piece of um, paper into the printer, printer paper into the printer, and I usually put an arrow so I know what direction. And the first time through, I just go ahead and print the border on this particular piece. The second time through, what I do is I take an oval, I'll move this over here, or whatever shape if you're using a rectangle, and then I use removable masking tape and just put just a, I'll just do a little bit here, I won't do, I'll, I just do a little tiny piece on the corner and then I'll put one down here and here. Then remember when you're in Photoshop to be on the layer where you don't have a border because if you print it through again, the border will print on this. So I go to a layer without the border and then put it through the printer. And then when it comes out, it ends up looking like that. And I'll show you, I'll take the happy birthday. And then in this case, I made it a little larger so, a little larger so we could see it. And then I would just change this quickly into a happy birthday card. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching and please visit my blog at paperboutique.blogspot.com for more projects and ideas. Bye-bye.